Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are tracking PTC-5 and its chances of becoming the next major hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. We'll discuss what impacts it could bring to the Caribbean islands, as well as if it's a target for Bermuda. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Sunday, August 11, 2024. The black arrow is pointed towards PTC-5, potential tropical cyclone 5, in the middle of the main development region right now, on its way in about two days from reaching the Caribbean islands, which is why it's been designated PTC-5, so we can National Hurricane Center can issue some tropical storm watches for those islands that it could be affecting. Here's the latest vorticity map of the Atlantic Basin, and you can see the middle red box there. That is PTC-5, getting its act together to become our next tropical system. We have two other tropical waves, one in the Caribbean and one near the Cabo Verde Islands, uh, but none of those are expected to develop at the moment. So here's the latest satellite image, a close-up view of PTC-5. You can see we have some thunderstorm convection, Nothing closed off or organized at the moment, but the National Hurricane Center is expecting this to develop into a tr potential tropical storm within the next 48 hours. So that's why it's been designated PTC-5 instead of just Invest 98L going forward. As you can see from the National Hurricane forecast, we have winds of 30 miles an hour moving west-northwest at 21. And the cone of uncertainty here is pretty consistent on its approach towards the Caribbean islands. That yellow is indicating tropical storm watches in effect for the northern islands, as you can see there. And we are expecting this one to become a hurricane. Question will be, when it will curve away from the Caribbean and into the Atlantic, and will it hit Bermuda? And if it's a hurricane, or if it's gonna be a major hurricane. You can see, we do have a pretty strong agreement in the spaghetti track guidance models here. They're pretty tight together. So they're all showing a good coherence of turning just around the Puerto Rico area and then moving in a north northeast direction at that point afterward. In terms of model intensity, we can see that there's a uh, good chance that this will be at least a hurricane. And then there's a couple of the top end models that suggest that we could see category three strength, maybe even higher because I'll show you in the models the significance of that. So here's the GFS 850 cyclonic vorticity, 5,000 feet up from the atmosphere, the spin and energy in the atmosphere. The black hexagon is PTC-5. Now where it's located right now, we're south of that Bermuda Azores high, which is going to be moving in that west-northwest direction, keeping a pretty low riding at the moment. High pressure is strong for the next two days or so. Now in terms of its development, we're not expecting rapid intensification like we saw with Beryl, uh, with this storm right away because you can see we have straight easterly flow right now. It's underneath a developing upper level ridge, but it's not quite there yet. So we do have light wind shear, so it's not going to see any dry air and intrusion from the Saharan air to its north. So its moisture bubble will be protected. But by the time we get to two days from now, on Tuesday, August 13th, you can see it's approaching the Caribbean islands, which is why it's been designated PTC-5, so we can issue those tropical storm watches. You can see the tight vorticity there, so we would have a closed low, definitely at least a depression, most likely a tropical storm at this point. But we also see the upper level ridge starting to form as it interacts with this upper level trough just to its north and west. That upper level trough is also going to be what starts to turn this storm to the north. So the combination of a strengthening, getting taller in the atmosphere, feeling the effects of this upper level trough will pull it northward. But it's also developing that upper level ridge, which will allow it from that point on to start to rapidly intensify as we go through the islands, turning north towards potentially Bermuda. So we're at 1,006 millibars right now. On two days from now, on Tuesday the 13th, you see the light wind shear environment with the nice outflow starting to be created, and that's going to really protect this moisture bubble 
as it moves north east i mean northwest into that saharan air layer and the reason another reason why it's going to turn to the north is we're going to see the bermuda azores high actually become a little bit weaker as this upper level trough will be digging in creating that valley between the mountains for this storm to go so this would be on wednesday august 14th as you can see it's moving through the islands three days from now this point is going down to a 997 millibar low pressure system expect a lot of rain as we go through here so anywhere in the yellows we're talking four to six inches 100 to 150 milliliters and in the oranges especially the southern coast of puerto rico virgin islands we could see anywhere between six and eight inches up to 250 milliliters so here you can see the key messages from the national hurricane center regarding ptc5 on the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause it to take a chance to read it. And then by the time we get to day five for Friday, August 16th, you can see we have a full blown hurricane on this model at this point. Very tight vorticity signature, well, well defined. And you can see how the Bermuda Azores High has moved pretty much over the Azores Islands at this point with this big gap in the middle so we also will see a well-defined upper level ridge over this right over this storm down to a 963 millibar low pressure system that's most likely going to be in and around the category three in terms of strength and this upper level trough just to its north and west that's going to allow it to continue moving north and then eventually northeast away from the united states but could be directly impacting bermuda definitely we'll see some swells and some outer bands it's still uncertain if the actual center will go over the storm since since it is such a small island here's that low wind shear environment and here it is blasting right through the saharan air layer between the two areas of dry air in between and here you can see that upper level trough and how tall the storm has gotten now where uh, you can see it around the black hexagon. That's actually tropical major storm hurricane Tor uh, Ernesto at this point interacting with that upper level trough, which will then eventually keep it moving north and northeast. As you can see here is a 961 millibar hurricane going into the North Atlantic. At from this point on, from a week out plus, it would start to go extra tropical at, after this. If we look at the European model for comparisons, we can see pretty much us, it's in agreement a little bit further to the west because it's a little bit weaker versus the GFS, which strengthens it a little bit faster. But it too goes right near Bermuda, just to the uh, eastern side of the storm. And in terms of strength, it's right there as well. It's around a 970 millibar hurricane in about a week's time going past Bermuda on the eastern side. So we'll still, it's going to be close. We'll have to fine tune the forecast as we get closer to potential impacts to Bermuda, how, if and when it will be direct or not. Uh, but we'll also see what impacts we'll get from the Caribbean islands in about two days time. Here's the ensemble models showing where this storm can go and how strong it can get over the next seven days. Those reds and orange lines, obviously the hurricane up to her major hurricane strength with the pinks as you can see on the GFS model. So we'll continue to monitor PTC-5 uh, probably in the next 24 hours or a little bit after that. We'll likely see this become either Tropical Depression 5 or Tropical Storm Ernesto. And then after getting through the Caribbean islands, becoming a hurricane, potentially a major hurricane in and around the approach to Bermuda. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.